everybody. I'd like to thank also our keynote speaker, Mr. Juan Mendez, for a very good um, presentation about torture, he being himself a survivor of torture. And I would like to thank TASC for once again inviting me here um, to speak before you about torture. I would like to respond to the speaker in my capacity as um, Secretary General of the Asian Federation Against Disappearances and International Coalition Against Enforced Disappearances um, based on our work with survivors of enforced disappearances, families of the disappeared who themselves are victims of torture, and also on my integration with torture survivors who are members of TASC. So tomorrow on the 26th of June, we will be giving an apt tribute to all victims of torture, both who survived torture and who haven't survived torture. So we are honored to have here the presence and solidarity of our keynote speaker, who is in the best position to be the human rapporteur on torture because he himself was a victim of torture during Argentina's dictatorship. Why we are here, it is obvious, and for the past days we have listened to sharings and testimonies of victims and survivors of torture. Nelis from El Salvador, Nora from Honduras, Hussein from Ethiopia, and to many others. It is very clear that there is an existence of torture here in the U.S. and in many other parts of the world. And we are here in recognition of the very negative effects of torture being suffered by many of us here, including our speaker, and of the need for individual and collective action to combat torture and to combat impunity, and the importance of the struggle for truth for justice, for reparation, rehabilitation, and uh, non-repetition. But unfortunately, as our speaker said, many states, even those who are states parties to the Convention Against Torture, have ignored um, many forms of healing. We're talking here of healing from torture. And based on our experience with families of the disappeared, with disappeared who reappeared and resurfaced alive, truth telling is a very important form of healing for victims and survivors to be able to tell their story. And it's important for them to be also in solidarity with co victims, co survivors, and of course, uh, the importance of therapy psychosocial support, psychosocial rehabilitation, accompaniment, and building communities of healing. Our speaker mentioned about Istanbul Protocol, which states should abide, but not all states or majority of states have um, respected this Istanbul, Istanbul Protocol, and the need to investigate torture in my country despite um, the Philippine government's ratification of the Convention on Torture and the enactment of a domestic law against torture, there are still many cases of torture even beyond the administration of President, the former President Marcos during the 21 years of his dictatorship, even under the present administration of President Benigno Aquino III. Our speaker mentioned of the existence of the UN Voluntary Fund for Victims of Torture, which our organization has benefited or is benefiting because it is giving direct medical, psychosocial assistance to victims of torture, victims of enforced disappearances who, suffer from, who have suffered from torture. And I would like to add that what is important for victims and survivors of torture is the need 
to find justice, to continue the work for justice, the need for solidarity, the need for reparation because damage has been done, and non-repetition. -rep so it is important, the work of TASC is very important, the work of other organizations fighting against torture is very important. In our case, um, with organizations of families of the disappeared in Asia and in the rest of the world, we consider enforced disappearance as also very much related to torture. So disappeared who survived um, enforced disappearance and who have lived to tell their stories, tell about their stories of torture. My husband, uh, who disappeared many years ago and was released because another detainee um, another disappeared person escaped has told about his story of torture uh, under the hands of the military intelligence group in the Philippines. And those who were found dead after days, months, weeks and months of uh, enforced disappearance, their bodies found were found with marks of torture, with evidence of torture. And there is continuing pain to families who themselves, some of them themselves disappeared in the search for finding, um, in, the search, in, in the course of finding the truth, in the course of finding their disappeared loved ones. Yesterday I gave some examples of um, disappeared, who reappeared, disappeared people who reappeared, like the Boricat brothers of Morocco. Three of them disappeared for more than 20 years and was, were able to, uh, they were released several years later because of the campaign of Amnesty International against political killings and disappearances. So their bodies, they are here in the U.S., their bodies uh, bear marks of torture. And uh, I also met Muhammad Adrani, also from Morocco. He disappeared for eight years. He was made to extract teeth of his co-detainees. And he was surfaced, he was released alive eight years after his disappearance. And in our country, uh, we have two brothers also who disappeared and they recounted, they presented to the Supreme Court uh, how they were able to witness the rape of two university of the Philippines female students who were forced to, to confess their involvement in uh, the Communist Party of the Philippines. So with this much remains to be done and I agree with uh, what our speaker mentioned about the importance of the multidisciplinary approach to torture because of distinct and varying effects of torture on each victim and in recognition also of the multi-layered effects of torture and the need for states to work with survivors and not on survivors. The need for participation, he stressed the importance of participation because they are in the best position to tell what is best for them. And we also in our organization agree against death about no to death penalty and no to solitary confinement. And in our experience with uh, victims, families of victims of disappearances, they suffer deteriorating health, also deteriorating mental health, hence health care is very important. So what should we do? There are many things that, that remain to be done. The conduct of different forms of healing and the work of task is really very important. And we hope that this could be replicated in other countries. The information dissemination for uh, on, on cases of torture and situations of torture in different countries because not many people know about this the need to build capacities among survivors of torture and of course a continuing campaign for ratification of the Convention on Torture in many countries and the enactment of laws against torture and most importantly
their implementation. And we're talking here of destroying the culture of torture. So I would like to reiterate, to repeat what Fatima um, Cabrera Rice mentioned yesterday, that it is important to build a human rights culture, a culture of human rights. Therefore, I would like finally to call for solidarity and unity among us in order to promote and defend life. No to torture. Thank you very much.